absolute top gun, there is the iPhone 16 Pro Max here in the flesh. Now, yes, just like the iPhone 16 Pro, this comes with the new A18 Pro chipset. And if you think that it looks similar to the previous Pro that I'm actually shooting this on, then let me correct you, the real magic is under the hood and when you're using this device, it's the best battery on an iPhone. It's one of the fastest iPhones ever, but most importantly, Apple intelligence is here. Even if you want to edit a video right here, you can go into the Photos app, go to 20%, 24 FPS, all the way up to 120 FPS, 4K 120 FPS in cinematic. This is a phone which is amazing for all of our shows, but you can also use it for high-end cinema and films as well. But that's not all, right? If you're using the camera app, and I think all the real changes have really come to the camera app. The real core of all of this has come to the camera app with this button, the camera control button, with this capacitive slider. This is the ingenuity this year on display in the Pro lineup. Now, one big thing that I must mention is that the Pro and the Pro Max are absolutely identical. It's only the screen sizes and battery that changes a little bit. This is a 6.9 inch screen, the biggest screen that you will see on an iPhone. If I click the camera shutter right here, now if I wanna double click right here, I have exposure, depth, you know, a bunch of features that we can access from right here. It just changes everything. We have a bunch of top photographers who we'll have on the show as well, videographers as well. This is becoming like a professional camera. And all of this, of course, now comes with Apple intelligence. So if you point the phone and perhaps there's a particular dog or an object that you like, if you use Apple intelligence with Siri, it will give you contextually, personally, and with all that awareness, give you all that data within the camera app itself. If you want to change the tone of an email, it will give you that particular tone. Change, proofread it. If you want to talk to your boss and ask for an appraisal, you can now make Apple intelligence do it. Chat GPT obviously coming as well. And obviously when Apple does this, it's with private cloud compute. What that means is that none of that data is stored or shared with Apple. It's through a very private, secure, encrypted cloud. So if you want to experience Apple intelligence, everyone asks about whether you should upgrade your iPhone. People talk about a two year, three year cycle. You have to upgrade your iPhone if you have anything earlier than a couple of years because Apple intelligence is built up on these iPhones. This iPhone 16 lineup, your first look here on Tech Today. This is a 16 Pro Max in all its splendor in desert titanium. And of course, we have the new iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Plus. This one is 6.1 inches, this one 6.7 inches. Usually popular back home in India. And this is in the new ultramarine color. I must say it is an eye catcher. But the good news is, if you're asking me about upgrading your iPhone 14 or even 15, then this is it. It now jumps a couple of generations with a chipset with A18 on it. And that means it comes with Apple intelligence. Much better battery life, of course, because you couple that new Apple silicon along with iOS 18 and you have these new iPhone 16s built from the ground up with Apple intelligence. Now, even some of those features, so I'm just going to use one of them right now. This one's obviously a lot more pocketable if you're holding it in your hand. If you just use the 16 Plus, which I think is the ideal size to really use, you now have camera control on this as well. So it's not just a pro feature. You could do a slight double tap over here, change the camera styles. You gotta be a little delicate with it. And then you can do all sorts of things over here as well, right? Now, that is, of course, what I showed you with the Pro and Pro Max, but what if you wanna use Apple intelligence? You wanna use it perhaps in your notes. You wanna use it to erase an object from a photo. All of that can now happen on the base iPhone 16 and 16 Plus as well. So I think this, and this when the you see the India pricing out and you realize that these are great options. The camera positioning, the, the module looks different now. From a distance, you can actually tell that these are new iPhones. And I think that's the real beauty with them. Of course, you can take great macro shots because now on the ultra wide sensor, you'd also have that ability on the iPhone 16. So much improved on the camera front, much improved, of course, with Apple Silicon with A18 and then all those features from Apple Intelligence coming to this particular device. Now, if you go, for instance, into the Notes app, and we've got, well, a note right here. How does Apple Intelligence work? If you select all of it, this is the Glow Time logo that you're looking for. Click on it right here, and you've got proofreading, you've got rewriting, you can make it more professional. You can make it more friendly, you can make it more romantic, all sorts of things. That's how Apple intelligence will work. Now, we've seen a lot of other manufacturers trying out AI and really experimenting with it. 
but Apple's done it differently and this is how you can really see the proof is in the pudding because this is now just seamlessly integrated across the Notes app, across the Messages app, across the Mail app. You see all these features now, AI for the rest of us is coming true on the iPhone 16 Plus and the iPhone 16. I know it's a little chaotic over here, but these are going to be very interesting products to review when we get back to the Tech Today studio. Your first look at the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Plus. Apple also launched new AirPods 4. The buds come with a slightly updated design for a comfortable fit. There's a higher version too, which comes with active noise cancellation, a feature previously exclusive to AirPods Pro. Both versions also get wireless charging as well as a Type-C port. It also features Apple's H2 chip that offers improved sound quality. Then of course, there's personalized spatial audio, voice isolation and gesture-based Siri controls as well. While the Cupertino-based company did not announce a new version of AirPods Pro, it did announce a whole host of health-based features for the Pro Buds. AirPods Pro will now offer a hearing protection feature. Using machine learning, the buds will automatically adjust to louder sounds, reducing their intensity to protect the user's hearing. This feature is designed to prevent further hearing damage for those exposed to excessive noise. Another interesting feature is a hearing test, which detects any sort of hearing loss, and AirPods Pro will also be able to act as a clinical-grade hearing aid for those who need it. AirPods Max, Apple's over-the-ear headphones, did not get any feature updates as such. Apple only announced new colors and replaced the lightning charging port with a Type-C. Moving on to the watch, Apple Watch Series 10 was also unveiled at the keynote, with the major highlight being sleep apnea detection. It comes with a large OLED display and thinner bezels, and it also has a metal back for durability and water resistance. The company claims that the watch can charge up to 80% in just 30 minutes. There's also a new depth sensor which assists water-based activities like snorkeling. Of course, a bunch of changes coming to the Apple Watch lineup as well. The Apple Watch Series 10 is getting a bunch of changes, but the Ultra is getting a new color, right? It's the same Ultra, you're getting this satin black color, and of course you have a Tides app which is giving you a bunch of new features as well, but these things can happen software-wise as well. The thing that's really interesting right now is the fact that the Apple Watch across the lineup can now figure out sleep apnea. Right, I'm gonna try holding this for you right here. Sleep apnea can be detected on an Apple Watch. So all the health features that we've seen on the Apple Watch, if you now open the health app, you will find, well, a notification which will tell you all about sleep apnea. Now this is really interesting because you had ACG, you had uh, irregular uh, heart rhythms, arrhythmia and stuff like that as well. You had blood oxygen monitoring. Now you also have a new feature called sleep apnea. We saw the Pixel Watch, they had the loss of heart rate feature that they introduced. Then Apple's leveled up, they've not really sat complacent on it. And most importantly, it's also coming to the older Apple Watch Ultra. So that's a very, very reassuring thing to know that there's one more reason to have an Apple Watch. And I think that's something that a lot of people will want to know if your watch can actually detect that. It's also pending approvals. I think in the keynote they mentioned it's pending approvals from the FDA and a bunch of regulators in different countries. But once that happens, that's a feature which you can figure out with a notification and then export a PDF and send it just like you could with ECGs on the Apple Watch. Now, I think that's a reason you'd want to consider buying an Apple Watch as well. We've seen a bunch of cases in India and on Tech Today where Many people have benefited from this feature and if tech is doing something right, we got to say it. If there's something off, we got to call it out as well. But in this scenario, the Apple Watch has been quite a game changer. It's the only wearable that can do, well, this to some level of proficiency and some level of accuracy and it's getting an upgrade as well.
I'm standing here outside an iconic Apple store with a very special guest on deck today, Karen Rasmussen from Apple. What a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, well, thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Karen, I say it's an iconic location because this, for every tech enthusiast, Apple enthusiast, is the store that you want to visit because it's a special one right behind me. There's a bunch of things that you get here that you don't get anywhere else in the world, not even Apple BKC. You want to tell our viewers why this one is special, especially if you're a tech geek? Absolutely. This is, we have many wonderful stores around the world, but this is one of my favorites. It was designed to be with Apple Park. Mm -hmm. And in addition to all the wonderful products and services that all our stores offer, this particular store has some special things that you mentioned. We have a special AR experience uh, to experience Apple Park in its full glory. It's mm -hmm. incredible. We have special merchandise, t-shirts and things that uh, if you want a little memento coming back from the Apple store from from Apple Park, you can uh, you can take some home with you. It's really a wonderful store. The way Apple has come in with Apple intelligence, is that something you see would make you really a fan of artificial intelligence? All those fears would be sort of put away because this seems to be the way forward. I think the way that they have designed it, uh, there's a lot of privacy in the way that it's being, yeah, right? Um, and I think that's really wonderful because because AI can be really, I mean, there were certain features that I was just like, oh my God. It's almost like I have a Harry Potter wand, you know, thanks. <laughs> so I'm like, if this is what AI is and it's giving you that kind of privacy, then it's great. I think Again, it's, it's empowering it's us a, it's as not individuals. It's first of its kind uh, yeah. concern or uh, question. Yeah. If you take different paradigms, the internet, social media, artificial intelligence. All three of these are incredibly scary in the wrong hands. Yeah. All of them need yeah. a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, steps along the way to safeguard privacy, to make sure there's consent, to make sure there's complete awareness that it's it's in 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 process. Mm -hmm. But what I saw today in this particular product, let's make it specific, was to have emails that are, you know, you don't have the time to read or comprehend an email. So reading right. comprehension has always been a human problem. Mm -hmm. So it takes 20 emails and it summarizes what you ca should not miss as the highlights of those 20 emails and gives it to you I as mean, a summary. That's insane. That's really amazing. The fact that they have 4K 120 FPS uh, possible on a phone that can live in your pocket and reside in your pocket, you have it all the time with you. I think for filmmakers and even for pro level photographers, videographers, I think that's a pretty big game changer. But apart from that, I also feel that Apple uh, seems like it has peaked in its hardware capabilities because there's not much in terms of innovation that we saw hardware wise. Uh, be it the AirPods Max, which just saw a very minor incremental upgrade to a USB-C port, or even uh, uh, even the AirPods uh, without any change. What is very evident from this entire event is that software is really king, and it's very much possible that brands, Apple and otherwise, are also software locking some of the features that will be unlocked at a later date, depending on FDA approvals, depending on the market being ready, depending on them. Uh, having a product roadmap in place. So I think hardware wise, we've seen the peaking of brands like Apple and the likes. In terms of software, it's very exciting, especially with Apple intelligence. Well, you know, if you're trying to compare Apple intelligence to say Gemini or ChatGPT, then you're probably uh, making an unfair comparison. Apples to oranges, shall we say, even if it's both still generative AI, because that's based on more of a uh, world knowledge. Apple intelligence is really about knowing what's on your device, uh, knowing what you need and being able to to provide help based on maybe what's on your calendar or a picture that you're looking at or a photo that you take. and. If you, right now they launched a new button, which is called a camera control, which is like a shutter for your camera. But if you really think about it differently, it's also a portal to a new world where you press a button on your phone, you point it at something and you can search or get information about it. Maybe it's a restaurant, get reviews, and then from there ask Apple Intelligence to maybe book a reservation for you. I think we're just at the cusp of what's possible, but they're definitely looking at the iPhone as a device, which is a portal to a new world of AI. Uh, the AI story was solid, but we're in such the early stages of it. I think the benefit for Apple is they have such a large 11 and 12 base that there'll be considerable upgraders. Uh, a couple of the key features that are different are that, that capacitive touch camera key and uh, uh, yeah, camera features. And then the, the, the public, I think, will slowly be uh, educated uh, on, on these new AI features. But 
Apple doesn't, isn't reliant on those AI features to sell these devices. They'll sell just because the installed base, uh, you know, it, it is so, you know, significant.